preview the, here to preview the weekend's basketball is Tom Condon. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's called a tip off. Tip off, tip off. Go back, go back, go back. How are things with you, Tom? Not so bad. I had a bit of difficulty there now getting the connection, but <laughs> I'm working off the phone, so all's good. Yeah, uh, Michael, do you want to start off there with Tom? Yeah, no, Tom. Just looking forward to the to the weekend. Um, obviously coming up against Galway. Um, looking back, even I presume one of your fond your fondest memory in a Limerick shirt is against Galway, and we were talking about the the hand of Tom earlier, the the little the little statue there is in the club. Could just even roll back to that twenty eighteen All Ireland final and those kind of final moments. Jeez, that's a long time ago, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but look, I suppose. Between ourselves and Galway, like we always had Titanic tussles, like and I suppose the seed was set earlier on in that season, um, uh, in the league uh, decider when we played them above in Salt Hill. When we came, I think we were eight, was it eight or ten points down? I think we were at half time and we came back to win the game, like and that kind of got the momentum going for us that year, set the ball rolling, like we um I say we got promoted and then we kind of grew as the year went on. And uh as I said, then we met them again in the All Ireland final and I said the rest is kind of history, but yeah, look, the Galway have always been kind of our, I suppose, would you could kind of say our bogey team the last couple of years? Like they're always able to match us with, with whether it be the league or the champions championship or stuff like that. So like you know, it's it's going to be another ding dong battle now this weekend. Is that a physicality thing, Tom? That you think that they're able to match up with you particularly well physically, or what do you think it is? Yeah, I think look like, physically and uh, skill wise as well. Like you know, they they're all well able to hurl. Like and God, whatever it is about up in Galway, like uh, they're just able to produce these big men. Like <laughs> I know James Skehill does beyond there from time to time. Like he's a big man. Like and I said most of the the Galway lads are big, over six foot tall. Like and strong, <laughs> almost like uh, farmers, <laughs> as you call them. Like you know, to be able to throw you around the place. But like look, physically they are, I suppose, the one team that can match Limerick. When you go to that middle third, I presume, like you know, the, even last year in the Ireland semi final, like it was just an absolute war, like and there were just bodies everywhere and just hits going in non stop, like and I suppose if other teams if they if they to take anything from that is just the physicality that that, that Galway have brought to match Limerick, like and and I suppose they've been the closest team to Limerick over the last couple of years. Tom, um, when Michael Verney brought up earlier on about this little bust or statue of your hand, I thought he was messing. Is, is he serious? And what's it made of? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is, um, uh, yeah, it is, uh, the club, they, to, I suppose, to honour the Ireland and stuff like that and what I achieved. I got a, a local fella to do a hand carving of, the, of uh, my hand and, and a ball inside it. Like So, uh, yeah, it is... It is I think it was at home, no, it was in the local clubhouse there for a while, but uh, yeah, I, I get a bit of a slag in about it, right? <laughs> I, remember and, and seeing, it... Um, yeah, I remember seeing McGregor doing something like that with the UFC. He dipped his hand in, like, wax. And, like, <laughs> is that, is this, are they literally coming up to your house and, like, putting your hand in wax, or what's the story? No, I, I, I think as far as I know, he did it just looking at the picture of, okay. of, of the all Iron final, like, of, of that, that still picture of me catching it, like, so I think he, he based it off of that now, in fairness, to, to, to some piece of work, like, but, uh, yeah, this is a bit of a slag in the boat, right? <laughs> yeah, and sure, a hand you're very familiar with as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was I going to say, Tom? Is it, made, is it timber? Is it a timber carbon? It is, yeah, it's, it's, it's made, I think it's made from, I think it's made from oak, or, as far as I know, I'm not too sure now, but, yeah, it is, <laughs> The hand, the hand itself, the sculpture itself is timber, and then um, the, there's a, an actual proper slitter. Now it's not the one that I caught in 2018. That was Tom Morris. He took care of that one. He put it into rose. <laughs> but um, no, they, they have they have a slitter put into it. Yeah, it is, and I think it's in a glass case now as well. So do you, um, go ahead. No, I was going to say, do you remember the feeling of catching the ball? Like, so the whistle still hadn't gone, but do you remember the feeling of catching it? Yeah, okay. and when you're on the pitch, you don't have much time to think. Like, it was just literally just get this ball out of here. Like, I don't, we kind of knew it was the last play, but like, it was just to make sure we just kind of got it out. So, the first instinct was just to run. And, and to, to, you just always knew that one of the lads would be dropping back there. And, like, I said, a half hour's are renowned for like dropping deep. Like, so Tom Morrissey was just there. So, to just give it to him and let him go run with it for a while. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And like, th sorry, Michael, you seem to have a question. No, but can you believe, Tom, like what's happened on the back of that? Like, it's it's mad, like just getting over the line once and ending that kind of famine. And 
look, like he could have easily won it in 19. And I was slagging Shane earlier. We were saying it's 19 is the softest all Ireland, softest all Ireland won in a long, long time. I don't get to comment on that. But can you believe what's happened since then? Like it's for a county that's been, you know, pretty much starved of success to see what's happened, you know, since that catch, since that last couple of minutes of the all Ireland final at 18. Now, like you're going for what you've won four and five years, you're going for four in a row. It's unbelievable, really, what the spin off of it. Yeah, and like I always believed if we got to the Ireland final, like being involved with Limerick since 09, like I always believed if we got to the final that we'd win it. And we just were never able to get, to get there. Like we lost to Clare in 2013 and again to Kilkenny in, in, in was it 14 or 15? And then I just always believed if we got there, we, we'd get over the line. But I never envisage like what what happened since like it's just I suppose the group of players that came that came along they were coming up through a proper development in the academy and stuff like that so like they were exposed to say the strength and conditioning they were exposed to a high level of that and and the, the skill set as well like they were getting top quality coaches and stuff like that so and John Kiley knew these players as well and he tried to integrate them in 2017 and I I, I mentioned it before I remember um meeting a few lads there um, towards the end of 2017 when the season, the inter-county season was over and I told them, I said, the next Limerick will win in our Ireland the next couple of years. I know I didn't expect it to be the following year, but I, I said that the, it, you know, the Makins were there of, of a great team. Like and I said, these young fellas that came on in 2017, they, they've, they've just taken the hurling to a phenomenal level. Like And look, that's down to John as well and, and Paul Kinnork and the whole backroom team, like Paul Kinnork is coaching is just, there's no words to describe it like and it's everything is is game based orientated like and everything he does is with a purpose you're not running laps or you're not running to come on for the sake of it it's everything you do in training you 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 match it on the field like and he was always a believer of training 120 or 30 percent above what the tempo or the intensity would be in a match like so when it came to a match you were able to do things comfortably and even like you know Limerick are renowned like for I suppose attempting these impossible passes and short pass in triangles and stuff like that to get out of situations. And I suppose Paul just encourages that in training. And, and you, you do it at such a high level in training that when it comes to a match, it just comes at an ease to these lads. Like, and as I say, he's coaching. It's these lads are only getting better because they're doing this day in day out, like at training. So as I say, from twenty eighteen, it's just taken off. Like, but I I think as well, I suppose there's been a turnover as well in other counties as well. Like Joe, some of the stalwarts are they all the star names have kind of joined they've gone to the stage of their career now where they were at the wrong side of 30 and they're kind of retiring and stuff like that so there was a bit of a changing going on in a lot of counties i suppose that had brought back the count or that that, that has kind of propelled limerick further ahead because they already had that done in 2017 that a lot of young fellas brought in and now you see john kiley he's kind of integrating one or two young players a year now like just to keep that rolling like but it was just that we got an influx of of great players and I suppose of a great management team in 2017 and it's just we're reaping rewards now and we, we just don't want it to stop we would have taken one in 2018 but look we won't complain and Tom like so when you're talking about uh Kinnerk and Kylie first coming in and changing everything and the games based training and uh you know that kind of stuff the results didn't come in the first year and I was down in Nolan Park when you lost that qualifier and I didn't think you'd perform particularly well that day. And I remember thinking at the time, three times during the match, there was Limerick players pulled on a ball that was on the ground that they probably could have gone down on. And I just thought it was so odd, even though I could see some players were classed, like Peter Casey and so on. But did you believe straight away? And at first, when these different types of activities were brought in rather than the old school drills going from maybe cone to cone, I'm not trying to do down any previous management. But like, did you at first think, well, I'm not sure about this. Yeah, and like, um, it, I suppose it just took time to embed the game plan and the style of play that Paul wanted us to play. Like, I suppose, look, Limerick would probably be renowned for off the cuff hurling or Joe Gung Ho hurling and stuff like that. And like, I remember Paul Connor pulled me up at one stage there early on in 2017. We were playing Waterford, and uh, I got a shot puck out off of Nicky Quaid. Like, and I was about, I suppose, 45 yards out from my own goal, but I turned and I, I thought I had a chance to shoot, and I took a shot. And I remember he just run in and he was just there, like, no, Tom, that's no, no, just no. And he ran away, like, and he was just there, play it through the lines, play it through the lines. So it took a while for it to, to integrate into it, it, uh, their game plan with the players, like, and I suppose there was shoots of it there throughout 2017. And I suppose we didn't bring that from the training field to 
game day in in a few of the games like and it, that was kind of frustrating because we knew we could actually do it in training but it was just to bring to bring it on to the pitch on game day was a thing and I suppose we didn't do ourselves justice in in 2017 but I I think that kind of stood to us because it, there was a lot of learning in it and fellas could see what Paul was, was and John were trying to implement it, it within the, the the squad and stuff like that. So I suppose it it did give fellas hope, like, and you could see that there was something there was something happening there, like. Yeah, it, Mike Casey was at one of our coaching clinics in Nace not so long ago. I'm looking forward to Barry Hennessy and um, and Pat Ryan going to ones as well in the next little while. But is there is there any sort of drills that really stood out to you and you were like, okay, I can see this working, or a drill that you like? Can you kind of give us an idea of some of the activities that you're like, geez, this really helped us out or helped me as a player? Um, well, <laughs> we always just kind of slag like that. He, most of the drills were forward orientated. Like there was a, <laughs> it was worst case scenario for the backs most of the time. Like so, like you'd have maybe small drills. Like there was there was never drills involving mass numbers. It was always maybe eight at a time in a pod and stuff like that. So like you might have had three forwards taking on two backs and the ball's being pinged from out the field like and it was just it was just worst case scenario the, the forwards were trying to work goals and stuff like that so you it, it just encouraged you to communicate to come out of your comfort zone and as i say like it was you you were operating at a level that way higher than what it would be in in game day so like as everything was kind of worst case scenario a lot of small sided games to in, improve your touch and and your reaction time and stuff like that and 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 basically to bring up your intensity for for that like mm, Michael was Paul very good Paul's obviously a very intelligent fella Tom like particularly intelligent um but is he able to dumb down his message shall we say to make sure that everybody's able to take it in and know exactly what he's doing he he doesn't strike me as the sort of lad that's using jargony type of language and coming out all these uh, terms that you'd be reading on Google Scholar or all these different documents, you know what I mean? He's, he's able to dumb it down quite well, is he? Uh, he is, and I suppose, look, he, he got a bit of a stick there um, with the water breaks. He used to bring out a tactics board, like, and I say uh, he, he he uses that the whole time. But it, it's just, when you, he and like, it was the same simple message the whole time. He'd show you visually, he'd tell you exactly what to do, or like he'd, he'd, he'd go one-on-one -on -one with you, you know, not a bother. He'd take the backs individually, forwards, midfields. Everyone knew their job. Whether And even if you were a sub, even if you are number 36, you knew that like, if there was a chance that you did make the, the game, the, the, the panel, that you knew that you, if you did come on, if you came on half-back, corner-back, whatever, like, you knew exactly what you had to do. Like, so, it, no, in fairness, he, look, he, I, I, he's very intelligent, but he did explain everything, like, precisely exactly because uh paul would be very atten attention to detail kind of fella like mm. and how much do you think you improved as a player just you know even if you weren't starting quite as often as you were towards the latter end but like as a player did you think you came on a lot and in what ways definitely and i suppose look you do know yourself in training if you're going well or not like and in fairness i, I did feel like i would yes i suppose the hurling and the fitness it did it did go up a couple of levels like and you as I say, you know in training if we're going well or not. And like there was times throughout the year, I, I did think, oh yeah, geez, I'm going well. And in fairness, John is, is very true to his word that way. Like if, you, if you're going well in training, he will give you a chance in matches and stuff like that. And, and they're very like that. If, if They base everything off your form and training. And if you're training well, if you're doing things right and you know, your attitude is right, you'll get the opportunities. And look, I suppose age wasn't on my side either. Like, you know, they, they brought on all these young fellas and they were trying to, I suppose, you know, integrate them into it as well and give them game time. So, yeah, look, I suppose I didn't get as much game time as, as I would have liked, but look, that sport, you you kind of move on and you kind of get on with it. <laughs> Just on what Shane was saying, Tom, you probably played some of your best hurling throughout the 2019 league, would I be right in saying? Remember, did you get, I think you got, did you get a score against Kilkenny down in Nolan Park? I think you scored. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that right, yeah. As well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I, had, I started the, the league well, and then I broke my finger in training. With uh, we were doing a drill with Keen Lynch, and then we kept we were on a training holiday, and we came back, and the whole COVID didn't hit, and the whole thing shut down. And when I came when we came back with the club, I I was struggling with um, an Achilles injury and stuff like that, and I got back to a place where I thought I was challenging for a position. On, on the the squad days um or the game day squad but um unfortunately I did make it for the semi final or the final and I suppose look I had a chat with John then at the, at the end of the year then and look I suppose the, yeah, made made a call then like this look time wasn't on my side and 
injuries were starting to rack up and stuff like that. And look, when when the body starts kind of shutting down <laughs> in a way that way, like so I've picked up a few injuries now over my time, and it just it was taking longer to recover. And you might be going well for a few games or a job a couple of weeks, and then all of a sudden another niggly injury might pop up, and it'll keep you keep you back and stuff like that. So look, it's all them kind of little things you have to look at and weigh up and. We made a call then after that. But yeah, look, 2019, I started well, but uh, it didn't end so well. <laughs> Did you, um, what was it going to, does, does John Kiley ever use the, the hairdryer treatment or is he fairly cool, calm and collected? <laughs> um, yeah, it, it can be a bit of a sorry Alex Ferguson at times, all right? Um, no, there was no boots flying around the, the dressing room, but uh, <laughs> you, you, you would feel like there would be sometimes. I know, look, in fairness to John, if, if he does lose the cool, like they're, 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 he's a reason to like you know. And in fairness, but it, it would never be too much. Like he, they never, they never lost the plot. It was always calm and cool, like in the dressing rooms, even at half time. Like it, he'd always kind of leave it to the players first as well, like to sort it out and stuff. Like that. in fairness, they were very that way. That, that it was, it was us that was driving this. Like it was the players. Like it was us. Like he just kind of steering it guiding us and, and helping us but like it was us that had to really drive it on like but he, he, half time during matches whatever like even before matches he'd always be cool and, and calm like and but in training if, if things weren't going well he'd stop training and call it out and you'd move on and take it on the chin but in fairness to John he's a very honest guy like that way yeah we were talking earlier about uh, Kieran Carey taking up playing football with the Limerick over 40s now, obviously you know I'm well married to, uh, to Sarah his daughter what um are you were you surprised when you heard that news? <laughs> I don't think anyone knew he was even going playing football. He just popped up and said, "Oh, I was playing a match last night. <laughs> I'm crippled today." And that's how we kind of found out he was playing the Masters football. But uh, yeah, he made, he made the panel there the other day, so a bit, bit of slagging going on now. <laughs> yeah, Tom, like, uh, Tom, Kieran reckons he got you your place on the Limerick Senior panel. He said back in those days when you went, when you were playing intermediate, he'd burst out with the ball. He wasn't said he wasn't fit to clear it. He'd give it to you. You'd launch it up the field. And he said, Jeez, I think he got called in at Limerick Deer after it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in, in 2008, uh, we, 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 I was playing cornerback alongside him in the, in the intermediates. And uh, yeah, Kieran used to, Kiran was towards, I suppose, the end of his career, but like he used to just go up, tip down the ball, and Kiran would never go too far. He just used to just pop it out to me or or the other uh, cornerback, and we used to just launch it. And I actually, I think I got, uh, I think I got uh, intermediate player of the year that year. Like, and I, it was based on just getting ball off of Kiran and just launching it. <laughs> so, was that yeah. how he ended up meeting his uh, his daughter Sarah? No, I I didn't meet her till uh, 2013, 14, 2014. Okay. So yeah, that, that was a few, that was a few years later. So it was uh, it was ironic, really. <laughs> and a good player in her own right. Yeah, she's and uh, like she's we've had a couple of children there the last couple of years, so she's had to take time out and stuff like that. But uh, she's back playing Quag, you know, uh, with the club this year, and she's she's after taking up a bit of a uh, long distance running and mar- she's gone doing the half marathon and stuff like that. So yeah, she uh, I say she's getting the itch again to go back. <laughs> Who has the better touch if you if you're going out poking at the side of the house? Who has the strike? Well, just watching her there the last couple of games, I would say she she definitely has the better touch at the moment. And uh, and uh, do you have uh, boys or girls? Uh, we've one boy, uh, Nikki. He's six, and we've two girls. They're one and a half and six months. So a busy right. busy house. So the girls aren't poking ball just yet, obviously at that age. No, but, uh, no, no. The young, the young fella is all right. He's he's. Playing hurling, he's playing football, uh, soccer as well. Like so, we're keeping him active. Lovely, he's loving it, is he? Oh, he is, yeah, and he's he, he's playing with uh, Patrick as well as well. So uh, yeah, I know he's, he's he's loving it. He's mad, mad for no mad for games and going up to game. He keeps asking when are we going to Dublin again. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not too long. How do you think Limerick can go this year? Like chasing four in a row, which has only really been done a few times in the history, Kilkenny and Cork. But this Limerick team, like, will they get on with the best ever if they actually do it this year? Yeah, look, as I say, we would have taken one in 2018 and what's happened since is, is just bonus territory. Like, But I suppose when you when you step back and you size it up and look at it, you're there like there, there is, there's another one or two all Ireland's there for the take. And, it, and it, it's, I think personally, it is Limericks to lose themselves, like if they get too complacent and stuff like that. Because as I say, most of the, most of the 
closest teams they're kind of new managers or they're trying to integrate new players so like there's a small bit of catching up to do I think but uh, yeah I, I think Limerick are still the standard bearers this year and if if they win it this year I can't see anyone stopping them um, the following year like you know it's I suppose like it's 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 testament or it, it's the, all credit to John and Paul for keeping that hunger there as well like because it's I suppose Kilkenny can testify to this like it's hard to keep that going like for so many years year in year out like you know and, and to come back and keep winning so like if they do win it yeah they'll be borderline I suppose they'll go there's still another step to go to to reach the, the best team I suppose of all time and um, who else do you think's in the mix this year? Yeah I suppose look Galway, Galway I think have improved after finding a couple of new players I think like um and physically, I think they're they're the team that can match that can match Limerick. But again, look, anything can happen on on, on a given day. It's 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 just it's a, I suppose they say it's a, it's a two horse race. Like, but um, if you if Limerick have enough day, they can be caught it happen in twenty nineteen. I suppose we we were we were I suppose confident going into that game, and so look, it signs on. It just shows like that we were a small bit off off the mark, and Kilkenny took full advantage of it. Um. I suppose Cork seem to be Joe Cork always have the I suppose they have the players and whatever. It's just sometimes they just never seem to bring it on game day. And you know, they they, they go they always seem to start very well in the year in the league and stuff like that, but it, it seems to fade when it comes to championship. I I don't know, is, is it is it a mental thing or, or what is it? Um Waterford Davy Factor, you know, it, it, anything could come out of Waterford, you know. And again, I, I I think it just it bodes well for an interesting campaign. Like, and I, I think I think it'll be a Limerick. I'm going to nail my colours to the mess now. I think it's going to be Limerick Galway final. I think. I, I, right. I, I think we'll boil that boil down to that. And uh, like after that sideline in 2019, that um, you know was deflected out by Killian Buckley, and it wasn't given. You, you would have had a chance for the 65 to level it. Was that the kind of like? Once that happened, that's when the era of the short sidelines came in, and I'm not even sure have Limerick gone for a score from a sideline since. Yeah, and like you, in fairness, you always would have backed Darrow Donovan to to put it over. Like I see, he's very good at him. Like, and I suppose look, Paul is 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 very um, numbers based, percentages and stuff like that. And I suppose they looked at the numbers like how many times are you realistically going to score from that? Whereas where would you be better off better off to retain possession? And work a score, and I suppose that's where a lot of these you see most teams now are, are going for for short sidelines. Like you know, unless now you have someone phenomenal like Joe Canning, you know that, that's able to put a ball over from sixty five yard, and you know it's going to go over. Like Joe, it's it's all kind of retain the position and, and try and work a score from there. Mm. And you th- did it take a while for you as a player to get used to the idea of you know the way you, you grow up, especially like you know being a little bit uh, you know from the era that maybe the three of us are from. You grow up and you're like set fire to the ball and let lads at the other end of the field deal with it whereas he's probably coaching you to be composed on the ball and take the extra second and and not panic yeah and it does it does take a while to get used to it. and it's all about being comfortable on the ball then as well like and it but I, I keep going back to like what what the training was based on it made you comfortable on the ball you know because you were exposed to such a high intensity in training and, and worst case scenarios that when it did when when you did get on the ball, that you were more composed and you were able to make these decisions better, like you know, and and that's the difference I think for Limerick at the moment is that they're a lot more composed on the ball than other teams, like and and they'll just keep recycling it and pa- they're comfortable passing the ball around. They're, they're not afraid to do it. They're not afraid to lose position and concede a score, but they'll keep trying it. They'll go again. They'll try again, and I think like that 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 just comes back again to to. Paul's philosophy and his training and stuff like that is just to make you comfortable on the ball. Mm, Tom, Tom, you mentioned there about um, Shane kind of asked you about whether John used the hair dryer in the dressing room or whatever. You know, as various little controversies or problems have arise over the, you know, throughout his reign or whatever, he seems to be very good at nipping things in the bud. Um, and it looks like the moon tour or the principal comes out in him quite quickly in that regard. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, and look, I suppose it's it's better to stop it quick before it grows and manifests into bigger things. Because a lot of these things grow legs, and you know, stories get added to and stuff like that. So I suppose look, John is very good at there at just I suppose uh, media management there, like John just nipping things in the bud and coming out and saying it as it is, like and let there be no um, hiding places or John you know, 
So, like, as you say, you can see the, the, the kind of teacher coming out in John there, like, that he's very good in those situations. I suppose, look, he's, he's dealing with these situations day in, day out. Like, but, um, yeah, look, these, you can't hide away from these things. They have to be addressed and they have to be, um, you know, met head on. Can I just ask you as well, um, were you in the Limerick dressing room long with the likes of, we'll say, Burns and Lynch and Hegarty and these lads and the Morrissey's until you realised, geez, the mentality of this boy, these boys are a bit different? Or, or is there anything that stands out where you're thinking, geez, this, like, these lads are bringing something completely different to the table here? They're changing the, the mentality even within our dressing room. Yeah, I, I, and uh, I remember Richie McCarthy has, has referenced it before as well. Uh, we were in a kind of a psych meeting with Caroline Curran and stuff like that. And this, I think this was 2017. And Richie, Richie passed some comment about, uh, yeah, hopefully now we, we win the weekend or in two weeks' time or something like that. And I remember Tom Morrissey just kind of turned around and he kind of said, what do you mean, hopefully? He said, I'm here to win. and <laughs> I'm here to, to win medals and stuff like that. And it's just kind of, Jeez, like, these boys actually draw you know, they're actually above their their age bracket like draw you know, their, their, their head screwed on like they 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 know what they want like you know and they, they, they weren't long piping up nipping Richie like and we were saying Richie McCarthy is probably like draw you know, a hero or whatever yeah, at that yeah. stage and if you this these young fellas coming in saying <laughs> what are you saying like you know we're here to win medals we're not hoping to win like you know we we're going to win like you know that that was their always their uh, their mentality is we're we're actually going to win like you know so. I say, you 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 saw that in a few of the psych meetings that we had. Mm, okay. they, haven't, they, ha- they haven't been too far along in the time that's passed since. In fairness, no, I, 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 like it's it's just crazy what what these lads have won. Like even from underage and through, like to, to, the list just goes on. And as I say, I was I'm just I was referring to hunger there earlier on. Like these, these boys are just they just want more and more. They want to win as much as they can while they can. Because look, I suppose when you're gone, you're gone. Like and you can't go back. But that's their mentality. They want to win as much as they can while they can. And just a final thing for me then, Tom. Uh, you mentioned having a lot of injuries, especially as you get a little bit older. Are you doing much hurling yourself these days or is the body allowing for it? Yeah, I, I, I went back. I signed for St. Patrick's, uh, Patrick's Well soccer team last year and I kind of made, made dust away. What sort of a signing on fee was involved there now? <laughs> <laughs> Just more so to get me out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I picked up a bit of a nasty injury there. I have, I have to get uh, kind of two pins put into my ankle. But I've been kind of putting off the operation now for a while. But uh, I went back and I played a bit of club hurling last year, right? Um, after the first round, I, I, I said I couldn't just sit by and, and watch it. So I said I'd, uh, I went back training, and strapped it up and played a few games. And yeah, no, I'm hoping to I'm hoping to play again this year now at the club. I, I started a... Uh, uh, over 35 soccer actually there last week, so I'm feeling old now at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Would you not be one of the younger lads in there, though? No? Uh Would you be one of the younger lads, though, at the over 35? I, I would be, yeah, yeah, it would be like so. It was actually by chance one of the lads from the club said to me, We're playing a bit of an over 35 league there. Have you any interest? And I said, All right, go on. So I said, I'll, I'll give it a go. So came through the first game, all right, anyway. So <laughs> happy out. Happy days. Well, look, Tom, really appreciate having you on the show. Uh, great old fun, and sure, hopefully we'll do it again. No matter. Thanks very much, lads. Cheers, Tom.